Hi, my name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon and I've been working for about 20 years in this field. Today I'm going to talk about something that's been confusing and a bit frustrating for me for a lot of years, and that is the way that people tend to think about obesity and obesity treatment as something other than a disease process. And to try to get a handle on this, I've thought about something that everybody understands is a medical disease process, and that's the general idea of cancer. Now, it may seem weird to put cancer treatment and obesity treatment into the same conversation, but I think that there are several concepts that are generally understood about cancer treatment that should be understood about obesity treatment, but that aren't. And I think that examining those differences and concepts can be useful for us to understand better how obesity ought to be treated. The first thing to understand that's obvious with cancer and has been shown to be true in recent research is that both of these diseases are biological conditions. And there's a clear sense in which people understand that uh, folks with cancer are victims of their disease. And there's this funny perception that people with obesity somehow choose their disease or somehow they deserve the results of their disease. And this turns out to be just factually incorrect. Uh, there is no sense in which people who suffer from obesity or cancer deserve their disease or its results. In the context of cancer, everyone understands that patients need medical and possibly surgical treatment. But in the context of obesity, there's still some misunderstanding and the idea that people ought to be able to treat this disease on their own as a matter of choice or as a matter of will. The fact is that for all these diseases, the, the type of treatment ought to be matched to the type of disease. The intensity of the treatment ought to be matched with the intensity of the disease and potentially beneficial treatment should not be withheld from people who need it. There are several other parallels between the cancer disease and obesity disease. First of these is that both diseases lead to pain, they lead to organ damage, and they lead to progressive disability. The second interesting thing that's obvious in the form of cancer is that there are multiple different subsets of the disease. We don't talk about cancer alone anymore. We talk about lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, etc. And the research is showing us that in the category of obesity, there are going to be multiple subsets of the disease. This is important because as we understand the disease better and we understand exactly what's going on for each individual patient, we're going to get smarter and smarter about targeting the therapy for the diseases. Another thing that's obvious with cancer that's not so obvious with obesity is that, in a sense, the disease steals life. Uh, both diseases shorten life and shorten the quality of life, uh, and quality of life is reduced even for people who are living alongside the disease or disease-free or disease under control. So uh, as with so many medical conditions, it's obviously true for both of these diseases that earlier stage intervention is more effective, and so one shouldn't wait to scale up the intensity of the intervention to match the intensity or the stage of the disease. Of course, not everything is the same in the cancer disease and the obesity disease. One interesting difference is in the age of people that are commonly affected with these diseases. And uh, although cancer does occur in younger people, uh, far and away the greatest number of cancer cases occurs in people who are older and usually beyond working age. Uh, on the other hand, obesity most often occurs in the young and people into working years. And uh, just as in cancer, we feel a special sense of poignancy or a sense of tragedy when a younger person is affected by the disease, I think that we should see that same type of poignancy or urgency or sense of loss, special loss, uh, when a younger person is affected with the obesity disease because so many valuable years of life are being affected or lost. One other important difference between cancer and obesity disease is the way that it shows up. And uh, cancer, you know, it grows inside the body probably for many years in most cases before it's recognized. And then it's diagnosed almost like a thunderclap or as an obvious sudden change. Um, obesity is, is different in the sense that it's in your face for many, many years, but it progresses very slowly and almost subtly. And uh, whereas cancer, once it shows up, brings with it an obvious and appropriate sense of urgency and treatment is measured in days and weeks, um, obesity moves so slowly and so subtly that it almost sneaks up on someone. Um, crossing the threshold from uh, being overweight but not sick to being obese and beginning to have disease or having strain on your body um, is so subtle that it uh, is almost like a whisper instead of that thunderclap of the obesity. And naturally enough in human nature, this means that obesity tends not to get the sense of urgency that cancer does. Um, and on one level that's appropriate because uh, cancer, once it's diagnosed, 
um, those cancer cells are growing inside the body and the cancer is winning and the person is losing every day that they live with the cancer. Uh, but we should recognize that uh, every day that a person lives with obesity, uh, they have loss of pancreas cells from insulin resistance. They have joints wearing out from excess physical load. They have uh, loss of physical and social opportunities from the pain and fatigue and from the stigma. So not to say that obesity treatment carries the same sense of urgency as cancer treatment carries, but we should recognize that obesity treatment is important for preservation of life and function as well. So what I hope I'm getting across with this comparison is that obesity is really something that should be thought of as a disease and that the treatment for this disease should be thought of using the same logical and statistical framework that you, we use for other diseases. And when I say other diseases, I don't just mean cancer, I also mean cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, I mean cholesterol disease, I mean diabetes, and many, many other diseases. For some reason, obesity brings with it this social decision-making process that I think is actually pretty counterproductive. Um, and I see this uh, decision-making process show up not only in terms of the medical people, the care providers, uh, but the people themselves who suffer from obesity tend to think that, first of all, well, this is something that I have to take care of on my own. This is my personal sole responsibility. And um, it's not wrong to say that people have a sense of responsibility. Most people I meet um, are ready to take on the responsibility of carrying forward this lifestyle change that's necessary to work with surgery and any other obesity treatment. But it's also not right to say that it is the sole responsibility of that person. And in my opinion, it is right to say that medical resources ought to be employed to help those people get back to normal health and normal function and normal longevity. Most people I meet who are considering surgery as part of the treatment plan for their obesity disease, they understand that the lifestyle change, diet and exercise, are foundations that every other treatment has to be built on. So they do take that responsibility and they do plan to continue working for the rest of their life. What they're looking for, though, is a tool that will make that effort more successful so that the diet and exercise actually do result in weight loss and improved health instead of temporary weight loss and then later weight regain and having the health return to the same disease state where it was before. I hope this little segment generates some additional thoughts and it's actually a conversation that I'd be happy to carry forward. Uh, anyone that wants to continue this conversation is welcome to post on this uh, YouTube segment or uh, to write me at my work email, which is drjp at sagebariatric.com. That doctor part is spelled out, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-P, not abbreviated D-R-J-P, at sagebariatric.com. And thanks for listening.